Hi there, I'm Matt Donnelly from Rotoballer, and it is time to talk about those week eight starts and sits at the tight end position. But before we do, I got those public service announcements I have to start each and every show with. First, remember, plenty can happen between today, which happens to be Monday, when I'm recording this video, and Sunday's kickoffs. So be sure to head over to the Rotoballer Discord channel, where experts such as myself and many others are there to answer your start and sit questions every day of the week. Second of all, hey, we've got no bye weeks this week, but we've still got some injuries, which is, you know what, we can deal with this because the scarcity of the position has left a lot of fantasy managers grasping at everything and anything they could possibly get on their hands in week number seven. But we did see the return of the elite tight end last week as Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, Dallas Goddard led the way of the position that surprisingly produced eight players with double-digit fantasy production. Fantasy managers rostering either Pat Fermuth or Greg Dolchich are going to need to find an alternative route here for fantasy, considering that both those players are going to be out till at least week 11 or week 12 after aggravating their hamstring injuries prior to week 7's contest. Jawan Johnson, he's now missed four straight contests with that calf injury, and Luke Musgrave and Gerald Everett each vacated their week 7 games earlier than anticipated. Can we take a second here right now to acknowledge all the Swifties out there worldwide? It was bad enough that Travis Kelsey was dominating at tight end, but now with Taylor Swift by his side, he's become enchanted and producing all too well. We are talking 108 yards per game with Swift in the tenant versus 46 and a half yards per game when she's not there. He becomes the man, the fantasy anti-hero, producing beyond our wildest dreams. Okay, I'm gonna shake it off here. Don't blame me, I just know all too well how this ends. With that said, here are a few tight ends that you must be starting here in week number eight. Starting with Jake Ferguson of the Dallas Cowboys as they take on the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams do a decent job when it comes to containing wideouts and tight ends, not so much. Los Angeles is allowing 19.23 fantasy points per game over the last four weeks thanks to yielding 24 receptions on 35 targets that have led to three touchdowns, not to mention the 349 yards in which they've surrendered. With extra attention being placed upon C.D. Lamb this week, Ferguson is at a positional advantage that the Cowboys could look to exploit. Well, Ferguson has mostly been a disappointment based on the expectations the industry, yeah, that's us, have placed upon him. But before the Cowboys bye week, we saw the highest usage to date. So hopefully that is a sign of things to come for Jake Ferguson. Another tight end you're starting this week is Darren Waller, who you would think would be a must start each and every week. Unfortunately, that has not been the case here in 2023. I literally have to put him on my must sit list or not mention him at all. But last week, Darren Waller turned into Darren Baller, who turned in one of his best tight end performances to date. We turned into the tight end that we thought he could be. Not the one that fantasy managers were basically dropping after week number five. Now against the commanders, Tyrod Taylor targeted Waller on eight occasions, resulting in seven receptions, one which just happened to go for a touchdown, not to mention those 98 yards he turned in. Many in New York may be hoping for another week of Tyrod Taylor as Daniel Jones and Waller connection that looked so promising during the preseason has yet to materialize. This week, Waller and the Giants face a Jets team that is allowing 15.85 fantasy points per game. That is the most in the National Football League. The Jets defense, they've also allowed five touchdowns to the position thus far. Another tight end that I feel more than comfortable starting this week is my man Dalton Schultz versus the Carolina Panthers. Carolina is actually pretty good. They're in the middle of the pack, ranking 16th in fantasy points allowed to the position. That said, Schultz and CJ Stroud seem to be getting on the same page the last couple weeks as the rookie single caller has targeted his tight end 17 times in the last two contests preceding the team's bye week. In the last three games, Schultz has also found a way to score a touchdown and produced 14 receptions for 168 yards. It is clear that CJ Stroud has command of this Texans offense and has been able to get everyone from Nico Collins and Tank Dell to Dalton Schultz involved early and often. Now, as far as tight ends you're sitting this week, Zach Ertz versus the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore is the second toughest defense on tight ends this season. They are one of only five teams that has yet to allow a touchdown to the position, and they've only given up 203 yards so far. I also have to feel that a trade has to be coming on for Zach Ertz here, or at the very least, we are witnessing the emergence of Trey McBride as the Cardinals tight end one. In the last two weeks, 
While Ertz has ran more routes, 43 to 38, it's been McBride who has more receptions, 7 targets, 11 yards, 91, along with a greater catch rate at 64% versus 56% and a higher passer rate when targeted, 89.6 to Ertz's 27.8. Another tight end that I'm sitting this week, well, maybe not sitting, but definitely tempering those expectations is Evan Ingram versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, Ingram, he leads the Jaguars in receptions. He faces a Steelers team that not only sits third in the fewest receiving yards allowed to the position with 188, but they've also allowed the second fewest receptions at 19. When you look at it from a fantasy lens, only the Browns, Ravens, Cardinals are allowing fewer fantasy points to tight ends than the Steelers are this season. And that also includes that six catch 65 yard performance courtesy of Mark Andrews back on October 8th. I know you can't necessarily afford to bench Ingram as he has seen at least five targets in every game this season and put up double digit fantasy production in four of seven contests. He's about as consistent as any tight end not dating Taylor Swift can be. I just don't like the matchup here. Another tight end that I'm tempering expectations for here in week number eight is Mark Andrews against that Cardinals defense. You're not sitting him, I get it. This Cardinals team though, they are legit. They have allowed just 265 yards this season to tight ends, which happens to be the 10th fewest. And like the Ravens, they are also one of those five teams that has yet to yield a touchdown to the position. Andrews himself is coming up a two touchdown performance against the Detroit Lions. So if you read the tea leaves here correctly, a disappointing performance is on the horizon. This week just happens to be one of the tougher matchups of the season. Here are your must start, must sit tight ends for week number eight. Jake Ferguson versus the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams, they do a good job when it comes to defending opposing wide receivers, but it comes at a price. That means Jake Ferguson is money this week. Darren Waller is another great option here, especially with Tyrod Taylor facing a Jets team that allows more fantasy points to tight ends than any other. You're also starting Dalton Schultz against Carolina. Follow the numbers. Three straight games with a touchdown, 17 targets in the last two weeks. Volume, people. A tight end you're sitting this week is Zach Ertz. Not only does he have to contend against one of the top defenses against tight ends, but potentially the loss of his starting position. You're also setting Evan Ingram, who has a tough task at hand, facing a Steelers defense that allows the second fewest receptions and the third fewest yards to tight ends, and also temper those expectations for Mark Andrews this week against the Cardinals team that has allowed just 4.2 fantasy points per game over the last four weeks. And make sure that you are tuned in, liking and subscribing our Roto Baller YouTube channel for plenty more fantasy football analysis.